What is up, Catfish World? Hope everybody's having a great, great Friday. It's Friday, correct? Yeah, it's Friday. Had to make sure. Uh, decided to go live today. I'm out here uh, doing some fishing on Lake Wiley. I'm trying to catch a catfish. It's uh, cold, uh, rainy, and just uh, a certain level of uh, just not nice. Our, uh, we've got rain, more rain coming. Uh, hey, TJ, welcome to the hood, man. You're the first one in the uh, in the chat there. Sunny's in. Good little crowd of people. What's up, folks? Uh, we got rain coming here. We've got, uh, they're calling, now I've heard two to four inches different places. So uh, a lot of rain coming. So uh, I'm out uh, trying to catch some fish. Jay said, you got this rain suit for Christmas. This is a frog tog. I think it's called a pilot something. It's got the uh, uh, bibs and stuff. And uh, I use it more as a windbreak than I do a rain suit. Uh, I wear it pretty much all the time in the winter just to keep the wind off of me. But it works as a rain suit too. It's unlined. It's just a good shell. I got a bunch of stuff on underneath it. Somebody asked, is that my real name? Fishing or Melhorn? Uh, just kidding. Dieter is my real name. It's a German name. I know that's confusing because I have a uh, southern accent. But uh, yeah, German descent. Mom's from Germany. Uh, married a U.S. soldier. That whole story. That's where Dieter came from. So uh, anyway, I'm out here fishing. Rain's coming. Calling for two to four inches of rain. On our, our reservoirs, our system, our lake system, one inch of rain is about a one foot rise on the lake that I fish. So you can see that two, three, four inches would be a pretty quick rise. They've dropped the lake a lot. We've had a lot of rain. Water's been moving through here continuously for a week now. Uh, and it's made fishing tough. Some stuff has really changed around. Uh, the water was muddy last week. I caught a, tied my personal best out here fishing. Was marking fish on ledges, a little bit of bait. It was good looking conditions. Today, riding up here, Water's clear as a bell. Uh, the fish aren't on ledges, or at least I'm not seeing them. They're either not there or they're buried up in the mud. Uh, some of the ones I've caught the past two days have been uh, covered in mud. So uh, they're laid up in the silt on the bottom. So I rode around a little bit, finally found a creek. I'm in a creek mouth and I found a few uh, places behind where the drops into the creek dish. There's some bait, uh, what looks like, uh, what looks like some perch maybe stacked up in there and a few arches around it. So I've got some baits in, a little bit of current. It's pretty slow today. I would, I'll give it the spit test. Yeah, probably only a half a mile an hour current. It slowed down a bunch. Uh, and that's what I'm doing. Basically anchored above where that creek ditch is right behind me and uh, just letting some scent get carried right down into it. Hopefully I can pick off some fish sitting in about 10, 11 feet of water right now. The hole there is about 18, 19 feet where it drops down into it. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, fishing has been, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Yesterday wasn't bad. How many did I have yesterday? Uh, yesterday I had eight fish. So it wasn't too bad. I uh, had a couple in the 20s and uh, couple of tainers and then some smaller ones and I caught all those fish shallow all those fish came in about two feet of water two to four feet of water uh, it was kind of scary shallow when I pulled out of it uh, there's a lot of the area where I was fishing I think is silted in and I think with them dropping the lake uh, when I turned the boat around and got the anchors up I was sitting in about 0.9 coming out of there so it was trimming the motor up and I was churning stuff and uh, Figuring out the best direction for Cito to come in and pull me off the uh, sand bar case I got stuck, but made it out okay. Uh, I had a guide party I took out a couple days ago. We fished the lower end of the lake. It was tough. Uh, the bite was better in the afternoon. Uh, we fished in the morning. They could not fish in the afternoon. It was a beautiful sunny day too, and I think I was wanting to fish in the afternoon, but uh, they couldn't do it because of their schedule. We only caught a few fish that morning. I went back after we were done and I caught several that afternoon. Sometimes that's the way it works this time of the year. These back pockets of water start to warm up and uh, the bite picks up in the afternoon. So uh, yes, Matt Moore, I'm already doing some guiding, 
Uh, I don't really advertise it or market it or promote it too much. But uh, yeah, so Dustin said, Canada will call on you for guiding without a captain's license. You do not have to have a captain's license to guide on this reservoir. A captain's license has nothing to do with guiding, technically. Uh, I do have a North Carolina guide license, so I'm legal there. Uh, but on this reservoir, a captain's license is not required. That's only for uh, charter boats, uh, and it doesn't even count on this reservoir. It's not a navigable water. So if I was down on Santee Cooper, you have to have one, Tennessee River, those kind of places that are navigable, you need to have a captain's license to operate a for hire vessel in those places. So uh, I saw that Matt Miles from Catfish was asking if uh, Catfish Dave was on the boat. I wish he was. I don't think Dave goes on boats. I don't know if Dave can swim or not. Uh, no, he, uh, he's a dedicated hardcore bank fisherman. Any of y'all who uh, do not know we're talking about it, it's Catfish Day from here on YouTube. Got a uh, channel of different sort. Uh, it's all bank fishing, 100%. Uh, he fishes the Tennessee River, uh, mostly Loudon and Watts Bar, and uh, it's all done from the bank. They've got a lot of public access out there, and uh, it's it's you know, a lot of places for him to fish. So. Uh, does a pretty cool channel uh, and completely dedicated to the bank fishing, which is uh, pretty interesting. So people are asking about the catfish conference. It's about two months away now. Uh, I'll be in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, I will be there. Looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to try to get out. I'm not sure. i got to look and see what's going on with work. Uh, the Daytona 500 is the weekend before that. And uh, just see what's going on when I'm going to get out there. But uh, should be good. Uh, it's a lot bigger this year. And uh, it's, uh, it should be a good crowd. There's going to be more boats and just a lot more stuff. So uh, who was that asking about air temperature? Air temperature is 45, 48. It's supposed to get to 60 today, believe it or not. Uh, so we'll see if that actually happens. Uh, and Reeling the Blues, Jeff Manning, uh, just asked if I ever work. Yeah, I do work. It says right now, these two weeks around the holidays are dead as a doornail generally for me, and I don't work. So, uh, I'm taking care of almost all the chores at home. Uh, so, I'm trying to get as much time on the water as I can, especially considering I haven't been out here a lot this well, I haven't been out here any this fall. Uh, this past week was the first time I've been out here. Since back in September, between work, boat going down, I uh, had to get a fuel pump and some stuff done on it. I hadn't been on the water, so it's kind of cool to get back out. Sadly, I'm coming out at a time when the fishing is not exactly primo due to the influx of water that we've had. So, uh, fish on the port side rod. <laughs> no bites. One's pulled tight on the corner. Is it that corner rod right there? Somebody let me know. That one looks tight, actually. Yeah. I'll wait for the drag to start ripping. Uh, I like when I can hear them and feel the pull resonating through the boat. That's when it's really cool. That I need some little bite alarms. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, see who all's in here. Good little crowd of people. Hello, everyone. I'm sure there are some people that are jumping in here. How many are in here? Let's see, there's 87 people. Wow, it's a good crowd. Uh, if you're a subscriber to the channel, uh, thank you for coming back and thank you for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, I'm Dieter. Nice to meet you. This is my fishing channel. Uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Uh, I do a few of these live deals. Uh, I try to put out at least two videos a week and uh, different kinds of content. It's all fishing content, uh, but uh, some real reviews, uh, some fishing out here on some fishing, some... Uh, little fishing stories. I put one out last week on a Mentor Mind Mac viral. You'll have to check it out. It was sponsored by the folks at Catfish. Uh, it's there on my list. Catfish presents uh, Fishing with Max. Pretty cool story. Uh, somebody's asking what the water temp is. Water temp 51. Uh, where I'm at right now, uh, I'm in about 51. It's clear. It's coming out of the upper lake above us. So it's a little bit warmer. I was fishing in some places yesterday that was muddy. And uh, <clears throat> was sitting in about 44 degree water for a while, 44.5. So uh, pretty chilly water, but I was catching fish. So uh, that's the way it goes. It, it's 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 weird. It, it's it's the fish are not where they're supposed to be. They're not doing what they're technically supposed. They were when the water was rising, when all that was going on, uh, when it was coming up, 
getting muddy. Everything was kind of uh, by the book. Uh, they read the book, they read the manual, they were where they were supposed to be. But now it's all dropping uh, and we've got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of water moving. And you guys in other parts of the country, you deal with that regularly. If you're on Ohio, Missouri, Mississippi, you deal with constant water flow. We don't. Uh, we fish <coughs> reservoirs uh, that are typically intermittent water flow. And this time of the year, generally, that water flows in the afternoon, uh, or I'm sorry, in the morning during peak electrical demand. People get up, take a shower, getting ready, flipping on the lights. That's the peak electrical demand, and that's when our water typically moves. It's a great time to get out and anchor up in any of the river sections. But now it's rolling 24 hours a day, and it changes up the fishing from what we're normally used to. And uh, it has a totally different effect on the fish, because really that's kind of not what they grew up in, so to speak. Uh, it's a different world and they start behaving differently, doing different things. I don't know if in other parts of the country in the rivers, if fish mud up the way they do here. And I'd be curious to see y'all's feedback on that. Uh, obviously in a lake like this, we get a lot of silt deposit, <coughs> water coming in, muddy water coming in. The silt, fine particulate settles down on the bottom. It gets a muddy, silty bottom. If you ever seen videos of somebody stepping into some mud and it sinks up to their knees, that's kind of what it's like. And the fish kind of, get down into it. You can see the mud line on them. It's just their heads out of the water. I'd be curious if you guys like on the Missouri River, Ohio River, see that too. If they do that uh, in those places in the river sections. Uh, it's just something we notice here during different periods. Usually once the fish kind of get locked up and inactive during uh, non-good times for fishing, I guess is the best way to see it. So here's a question here. Let me uh, come back. How did the fish move when it goes from cold out to mid 60s in a day like in North Carolina this weekend? Good question, Jeff. Y'all see Jeff Burns' question there. Uh, what we hope happens if they read the book is they start to move up into shallower water. It's kind of dictated by the bait, but <clears throat> generally what will happen if you start to get a spike in that water temperature, especially we're 51 now. If we get some areas where it starts spiking up into the mid to upper 50s, especially with some of these higher temps. The bait's going to be more frequent and moving around in the shallow waters, and so will the catfish. So it's a good time to go shallow uh, when you get these spikes in winter temperatures. So I saw Patriot Catfishers was in the house. He's got a tournament coming up next month. I say next month, January, it's in a couple of weeks. Uh, on Lake Wiley, it's a YouTuber's tournament. <coughs> and there's also going to be some uh, veterans that will be fishing with some of the fishermen that'll be out there. <clears throat> so I'm planning to be there, uh, good Lord willing, and nothing changes in my schedule. And uh, it will be a pretty cool tournament. We're gonna try to go live. It's on a Saturday. So we'll, all of us will kind of be staggering when we're going live. So you'll be able to kind of hop around. James is gonna get out a list. I'll get out a list, uh, kind of telling, hey, who's going live? Who's gonna be doing stuff? So basically that Saturday, you'll be able to watch people all day long going live from the fishing tournament. Uh, which will be pretty cool. Uh, it'll be a good way to see what's going on and uh, see who's catching fish, not catching fish, how everything's going. And uh, we may even have some pretty cool stories with some of the people that's on the boat. Uh, so that'll be pretty cool. Uh, Patriot Catfishers of America, he's in the feed somewhere down there. And uh, you can check it out. He's got the information. Uh, if you're subscribed to this channel, I will be uh, having a promo up with a little more information on it to keep you abreast of uh, what's going on with that. It's only, I can't get into my calendar because it's in my phone, but I think it's two weeks away, something like that. So it's a very low entry fee. Uh, the coolest thing about it is that all of the money is going to the honor guard uh, that does the flag presentation at uh, a veteran's funeral. So it's a very, very good cause for January 12th. Patriot Cat Fishers is jumping in there January 12th. I didn't want to say the wrong date, but uh, it's a, uh, very good use for the money. He's got some trophies donated, so if you win it, you get a trophy, which is cool. And uh, yeah, I think it's a, a good call. That one is getting hit. That may have a fish on it. If somebody, I don't know if somebody was jerking my chain and saying there was a fish on it, or if there really was a fish on it. I think there's a fish. Let me check it real quick. Bear with me. Let's see if we get this adjusted here. Stay there. I know this, it's around something. 
exactly what this rod does. See how it's doing that herky jerky? That means it's around something. Yeah, it's off of it. Uh, back in it. Sorry about that. That one's hung up on something. I'm not going to mess with it right now. I'm just leaving it in there. Maybe something will come eat it. Uh, when you get that herky-jerky in a rod when you're reeling something in, uh, if you had not experienced that, usually you're around something. You're going around a limb or around a rock or something like that. Uh, so be careful uh, because you can do what I did and just drag the bait right up to it and get it hung up in it. Or if you got a fish, uh, you can do it. It's kind of a gamble. If you let the fish swim off, he may wrap around it. So it's kind of, kind of tough. Junior progress are asking, am I anchored? Yep, I'm anchored. I haven't done, I drifted with a guide trip the other day, just on the lower lake, knowing I probably shouldn't have, but we just wanted to cover some water and, um, uh, it did not produce. I have been anchored for, or really since I've been out. So, uh, what lake is that tournament on? That'll be on Lake Wiley. Sorry you came in late. That's okay, Jason. It's on Lake Wiley. I'm gonna put some promos up, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and uh, I'll uh, get some up on here and also have some on Facebook. Anybody that's new in here that doesn't know, I also have a Facebook fishing page, Cedar Millhorn Fishing, that I put up a little more intermittent stuff, just different fishing stuff if I'm catching fish, that kind of stuff. So you can check it out, Dieter Melhorn Fishing on Facebook selfless promo there's another question in here what lay a river yes i'm anchored something hidden is stick fish he's practicing fish i'm just scrolling through the feed here while i can do it and regrowing your kentucky cat man asking about the ponytail no i don't uh, i'm not going to uh, it was so intimidating for chris flores at muddy river catfishing with the challenge that i threw out to him that he just folded up like a house of cards and disappeared from the world for a while. So I really don't want to put that kind of pressure on anybody again in a challenge to have to cut it back off again. No, seriously, uh, love Chris Flores. He's in the feed somewhere. That's why I'm jerking his chain. Uh, no, it's short. It's, uh, I got it cut short again. Uh, it's just easier to deal. It's just easier to deal with. It's kind of, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, I work outside in the summertime and it's just it's it's a pain so uh then you get all these crazy stupid hairs and i've got like ocd or something and that kind of bothers me with all that stuff and uh yeah i'm not incredibly sexy with it so uh i kind of don't have any real good reason to keep it but no i just kind of did it on uh if you didn't know the story and anybody that's new i grew a ponytail i spent about I don't know, two years growing. It started as a dare with my wife so that I could get a new truck, and then I got a new truck, and I just kept letting it grow, and then finally I got mad one day and uh, got rid of it. So, yeah, uh, the uh, Muddy River Catfishing, uh, I did. I had a deal with Suave for $1.2 million, and I just didn't need it, man. I just don't need that I just don't hassle. So, but, uh, yeah, it's... It's gone. It's gone. North Carolina or the lower leg, David. I'm on. I'm in the upper end. I am in a place I probably shouldn't be fishing to catch fish. To be perfectly honest, uh, but uh, here's the gamble. One, there's some current. Uh, two, there's always fish here. Uh, the bite is not always good. I'm kind of just swinging for the fence and going for big fish today. So uh, I'm kind of away from where the bait is. I believe that a lot of these fish up here just never leave. Uh, they don't always feed heavily, but they don't ever leave. So kind of messing around up here a little bit. I may go back down south before it's over with and do some fishing down there. Uh, but I just wanted to try it up here, try a few things to see what's going on. So uh, do you catch channel cats in this temperature? What is the air and water temp? Who was asking that? That was Brandon. Uh, 51 degrees where I'm at. There's parts of this lake that are in the mid 40s now. Uh, channel cats are, you will catch them. Uh, there's not a lot of them. They're not on fire. The bite is not blowing up. A channel cat's metabolism doubles and, decre and decreases for every 10 degrees in water temperature. So the colder it gets, the less they feed. 
the hotter it gets, the more they feed. So the more they need to eat. And that's why you notice them in the summertime blowing up all the time everywhere if you got them in your lake. So uh, we don't catch that many of them. When we start getting fish deep, at some point for whatever reason, bait and catfish will move deep. Uh, when we start fishing that deep water, for some reason, we start catching some big channel cats then. Uh, and I don't know if that's just because they're staged up deeper, they're feeding with blues or what the deal is, or if they're just feeding on the shad that's moved deeper. But uh, different times in the wintertime, the stuff will go deep. It's not, uh, and it's crazy, it, you know, the, the, it's not because it's super cold. Uh, it's just for whatever reason with what's, oh, look, I just got a tweet announcement from Dar Sizzle. This is when the number of people watching my channel will plummet quickly because they probably got the same thing that Dar Sizzle just put something up on Twitter and they'll have to dash over there to see what's going on. Uh, <laughs> I have to laugh, Dar Sizzle, I love her. She's actually gotten really good with her channel. It's gotten a lot better. Thank you for the explanation. Sure, dude, I hope that makes a little bit of sense on what's going on. Um, you know, it's... Uh, Temperature has an effect on fish. Blue seem to eat really good when it's cold and colder. They seem to tolerate it better than any of them. Right now, with these temperatures still in the 50 mark, uh, it's still a good time to catch fish. And uh, November, December, early January is always a good time to catch uh, big fish and catch good numbers of medium to big fish. Uh, your smaller fish, eater size, are you know, real good in the summertime. You can catch those. Uh, after the spawn or before the spawn, you can get on real good numbers. So, uh, can you put the quality on HD? I don't think I can control that. The signal is going out 1080, but I think that on your end, you have to change the quality. I'm going to double check and look. It's a good question. But I think the. Yeah, it looks like it's set for 1080. There's a view up the lake. Isn't that just gloomy looking look at that low clouds low ceiling today rains are coming if it's pixelated that's weird uh is it pixelated for everybody that's a good question my signal looks good usually i start to get warnings that it's bad so it looks fishy to me yeah it does mike it's a uh, oh fish on good one we got one pulling line Oh, look at there, swimming off. Bye, him. I guess I better go catch it. Stand by. Stand by. This one came on a Carolina rig. Uh, up kind of shallow where this one's at, so. Not a monster, but we'll take it. 30 pound Andy line. This is a Abby Garcia 5,000 reel power handle. And a big cat fever, medium heavy rod. I'll go over tackle after I get this one in. I'm saying six pounds. Wait, 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 let me lift it again. Oh no, 10 pounds, 10 pounds. Let's see. Sitting in about 11 feet of water, 10, 11. That's where this one came. It's up on a little sandbar here. the most famous words when I get one to the boat if you've watched any of my videos. Oh, bigger than I thought. Still a bug of grip. Oh, he's barely hooked. talking about barely hooked. Let's see if I can show y'all this. Get that off. It. There we go. We're still there. Still there. Hopefully it didn't break up. Look at that. <laughs> oh, let's cheat to death. Cheat to death on that one. 12 pounds. That's a good guess. It is. Sixteen. Easy. Yes. Hello, 
catfish world. Hello. Hello, Chris Flores. It's cold here. It's not like New Mexico where it's nice and warm. There he is, long river body fish. Big old long body. Is there mud on that side? A little bit, got a bite mark down there, an old one that's healed up. A Little bit of mud, a little bit on this side, not much. Good looking fish, gonna get it back alive for you to catch. At least the boga. Hang on, let's just say bye. You gonna say bye bye? Say bye everybody. In the water. One down. I'll show you the rig real quick. This is a uh, <clears throat> a lot of people. A lot of people watching don't know what a fish with. Uh, I've got two different rigs out. I've got eight rods in the water. There's no rod limit in the Carolinas. So I know a bunch of you guys have a rod limit. We don't. So I've got eight of them out. Six of them have Santee style drift rigs. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got to reset the fish counter. There you go. Ready? Bam, number one. Six of them have Santee style drift rigs. I have a drifter candy. I'll show you what it looks like. I've got videos on it. Uh, and two of them have regular Carolina rigs, which is basically a hook, a circle hook that I get from Hooker's Terminal Tackle. That's where I get my circle hooks from. These are like, they look just like and shaped like an octopus circle hook. So I think they call them Reapers. I know they have one that's a backstabber that's built a little more like a owner hook. Uh, I think in the gap and everything. So I like that hook too. Uh, but yeah, that's the hook on the money end. It's a piece of, it's either, yeah, this is the 50, 50 pound Andy monofilament. I don't use anything fancy. Don't use fluorocarbon or any of that stuff. Just uh, just call me evil or whatever, but uh, don't feel you need it. Uh, I don't have problems with leaders breaking. Coming up that leader, I tie to a swivel and I don't go crazy with swivels either. I mean, maybe 50 pounds for whatever. I've only got 30 pound line and about eight pounds of drag is all I'm running. So you're not gonna break a fit. You know, you don't need a 100 pound swivel. So anyway, uh, Andy, monster line, 30 pounds. Just improved clinch knots, tying it together. And then I've got a rig wrap, easy sinker slide. That's what I put my sinkers on. Uh, if you hadn't seen these things, they go on and off the line really easy so that if you want to take them off, you can take them off or you can add them. Uh, what I started doing was if I want to take a Santee style rig that has a cork on it and make it into a Carolina rig, I can take one of these, pop off my uh, other slide and put it on there and I can put this back on and I'm good to go. So, bam back on there so and then I've just got a little weight here this is uh, similar to the ones I got some from uh, uh, these are similar to pencil weights uh, I just want but a buddy of mine makes some Jeff Manning Jeff if you're in the feed some of your weights are still working so Dale's homemade tackle makes some uh, some pencil weights that have the little wire loop on the end and I use those for uh, drifting and dragging. I also use them out here. So this one's heavy. This is probably three ounces. And uh, the other ones I got from him are like two, two and a half ounces. So that's the rig I got. It's just a basically a Carolina rig. If you use these uh, sinker slides, these easy sinker slides from rig wrap, be sure to put a bead on. Uh, reason being, because of the way it's designed where it opens up here, it will slide down on top of your swivel if you don't. So you put that bead on there, causes it not to bump up to it. And it's good to go. So, uh, I gotta kill a piece of bait. Well, actually, I got a dead piece back here. I'm gonna cut a piece. I'll show you how I'll hook it on. So, bear with me. Small gizzard, Chad. What I do is, 
there's a way I could show y'all this? And y'all, uh, I don't have a way to put it on my head or anything. So, anyway, I'll do this. Let me cut it real quick. I cut its tail off and then do what I call a Polish fillet. I cut it from the back up to the head. So, you see there? Leave a little section here. I'll show you why in a second. Cut it back up that way. Break its spine in there with the knife. Don't cut all the way through it. Break its spine. Here's why. The reason I do this is you can take a small piece of bait. You can take a small piece of bait and make it a very big presentation. Hook, bait. That piece right there with the cut side towards you, hook it through there, through the spine part, okay? With me so far? You got that flap hanging. Come back up through here, and that's why you just break the back on it and hook through there. Turns a small bait into a big, smelly, scent-laden gob of goodness. Gob of goodness. Put this in the water. Just like that, we're fishing. Bam, hope everybody's doing good. Got a little crowd of people, thanks for dropping by. If there's new folks in here who have never been here before, my name's Dieter. I'm uh, the Dieter and Dieter Milburn Fishing. Uh, welcome to the channel, uh, appreciate you dropping by. Please consider subscribing. Uh, we do some of these live feeds occasionally, do the regular fishing videos, do some product reviews, just all kinds of different stuff, so. Uh, yeah, that's what's going on. I'm anchored up fishing on Lake Wiley on the North Carolina, South Carolina line. Waiting on the rain. Is that a song? Uh, I'm just waiting on. It's waiting on a friend. Waiting on. But anyway, I don't know. Dieter is the man. So informative. Thank you, TPV. Basically, all I do is pass along what I'm doing. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's not uh, the only way to do it. But it's the way I do it. And. It caught a fish, so whatever I did, we'll catch one fish. It's guaranteed that it would catch one fish. Yeah, I just pass along the information. I do, um, there's a lot of good YouTube. The beautiful thing about YouTube, there's a lot of good channels out there with people fishing in totally different situation. There's somebody here in the feed, Chris Flores, Muddy River Cat Fishing. Fishes an entirely different part of the country different scenario from where I fish and a lot of good information for somebody that fishes in that world. Uh, you know, if you're fishing the Ohio River, what I do for the most part doesn't really apply to you all the time. There may be some stuff in there about seasonal stuff, different things that will apply some gear, but the fishing's not going to be the same. <clears throat> uh, but I will say this, I watch a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, I watch Chris Souders, his stuff. He fishes totally different water than what I fish. Uh, but it's cool to see what he does and how he does it because no matter where you're fishing, how you're fishing, there's little bitty things that you can pick up from somebody. So it's uh, cool to watch different stuff, uh, what different people are doing. And uh, yeah, it's cool. I seen, uh, did I just see Doc? Uh, yeah, Doc Lang's in the house. Doc, let everybody know what the Catfish Weekly schedule is this week. I know normally everybody, Catfish Weekly comes on Monday night at 8 o'clock here on YouTube. you got to subscribe to it and you got to watch it every week. But with the holidays falling the way they are, they shift around their schedule. So I think they're going to be doing whatever show they got this week and probably on Sunday. I know last week, Sunday night this week, Doc just said it. So this Sunday night, tune in to Catfish Weekly here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and make sure that you hit the bell so you'll be notified because after that, it'll be coming on on Monday night. That's when it normally comes on. They shift their schedule a little bit uh, because of the holidays so that, you know, it's New Year's Eve. All of y'all are out, you know, partying and everything. So you don't want to watch Catfish Weekly, even though I do. I would. But, you know, some of you are, you know, not as hardcore. So, but yeah, make sure you subscribe to that channel and check it out. But, yeah, about the info, it's... It's the cool thing about YouTube. It's a, uh, you know, there's a lot of information out there uh, more and more. Some people don't like it. I think it's good. I think we have educated anglers. I think along with 
teaching people how to catch fish. Uh, we can teach the people the importance of conservation. Not that you have to throw every fish back, but you know, to be selective in your harvest. And I think the big thing is, is that if you teach them how to catch fish, they have the confidence to go back and do it again. I think, uh, you know, in the past, somebody got lucky and caught a fish and it was like, you know, I'll call one, you know, I gotta drag it around town and show it to everybody. Now in today's world, I think people have a lot more confidence in catching fish. And uh, I swear I'm not tweaking on math. I'm just, I'm hearing some stuff and I noticed the boat was moving. So I was making sure the rods weren't doing anything weird. So. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. Uh, uh, my finger's wet. It is raining a little bit here. I'm trying to do this without flipping out of the screen like I did earlier. Oh, there it goes. Let's see, testing now. What gear am I testing now? Good question, Sonny. I haven't had anything new. Um, you know, I just put a video up on what I was doing. I, I've been running those lose reels for about a year. And, you know, a lot of people said, oh, they're a Ming Yang. And I looked at the Ming Yang and they look similar, but they're not the exact same thing. So uh, I, I want to get one of those. <laughs> I want to get a Cast King. I've been trying to find somebody at Cast King to reach out to. I would love to get a pair of Cast King reels and try those out. I've had a lot of people say you need to try those out and give an honest evaluation. And all I do is an honest evaluation on them. Uh, I'm not paid to promote them. Uh, I just try to fish with them, see what works, and, you know, dispel any rumors about them. Uh, and what about Pinky? Pinky's in the house. Pinky's over here. I'll show you what my uh, arsenal looks like now. Uh, I basically got a mix of different stuff. Try not to have the camera in the like, same time. I got my good old... Abu Garcia, 5,000. Good reel, workhorse. Can't go wrong with it. Got a power handle on it. There's Pinky and Pinky's brother, our sister, Blackie. They're both ancient mariner reels uh, that are very similar to some of the Ming Yang, Cast King, all these other different names. Uh, supposedly, the gearing in them has been redone and replaced and they do come with a lifetime warranty. So, I've been trying those out, cannot break them. I've caught a king mackerel, two king mackerel on this one and a bunch of sharks on both of them and I can't break them. Here's the lose reel I was talking about. That's the one I just put the video up on. Does not have a power handle, but has a super big handle on it that almost acts like a power handle. Today's bait selection, a couple of dead shad, Puppy, some white perch hiding. It's the other one. That's the other lose. Now on this side, a couple of the workhorses of the catfish world. Abu Garcia 6500 C3s. You can't beat them. Uh, they cost more money. This is not expensive to get into, but these are the good ones. These are, if you can see it there, they are made in Sweden. These are the good ones. Uh, if you can afford them, buy them. Uh, they're you know, one of the best bait casting reels made, period, anywhere. And now another 5,000 over here. So that's kind of my uh, mix of reels that I've got. And the other thing is the Big Cat Fever rods. So that's the uh, smattering of stuff that I've got. I thought I might be having a bite. Um, I like trying to reel. The reel thing started with a person that said, hey, I got some of these reels. You try them out, I wanna sell them in my store. Tell me if they're worth the crap. So, started messing with him. He ended up going out of business, so he's not around anymore. But uh, that's how the loose thing started. And then Trent Kirby on here saw that and said, hey, you need to try one of these Ancient Mariner reels. So he sent me one. And then the people at Ancient Mariner sent me another one. So. Uh, to put them through the paces and I'm trying to break them. So I'll let you know when they break. Uh, I'm not going to pull any punches just like with the, uh, with the uh, loose reels. That's a fish swimming off right there on that rod. The line is going that way. Oh, I think he just dropped the bait. I think he just dropped it. I'm going to pull this in, check it. I 
one of my smaller baits out, one of my homemade demon dragons on this. Double troubled with a hooker's terminal tackle or uh, hooker's terminal tackle line rattle. A little small piece of bait on this one. This is on a Santee rig, so it's floating up off the bottom. There he goes right there. Oh, he's dropping it again. I got channel cats, I think. And that's that loose reel. You can hear how it's just quiet and smooth it is. There he goes. There he goes. Ah. Boom. Right there. Right there. Got him hooked that time. Whoop. Yeah, it casts really good. It's a great casting reel. Somebody asked me which one I like better as far as the knockoffs go, the uh, Luz or the Ancient Mariner. They, uh, when I say knockoffs, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, they both kind of got their positive. This feels like it may be another teener. All right, guess the weight. I'm trying to give you some rod bend. Not that big, not that big. I think he was wrapped. There he's on the top. Get out of that line. I think he was wrapped, it's not that big. Doing the fish dance, doing the rod dance. Some of y'all ask why I used the bogey grip, I'll tell you in a second. Whoever said 10 pounds, you got it. There he is. That slopey head, got kind of that little slopey head. Going on. Got that mud. See that mud on? I can't see it too much. Got something around his head. I must have drug him into some mud. Good looking blue cat. Nice fish. Get one for the thumbnail. Chick! There we go. Bam! And that was on one of the Santee style rigs. Yes, I do fish those when I'm anchored up. Especially when I've got some current, uh, they will float that bait right up off the bottom. This one has a plain cork on it, bare cork, floating the bait up. Flutters out there in the current, good presentation, gives the fish a bait that's sitting up off the bottom, helps with the spread of scent. They can come up, nail it, pop it, and off to the race as they go. Uh, if you haven't seen one of these Santee rigs, same line, same rod, same reel. I do mine, these here, to a snap swivel. This is what I call the easy sand tee. To a snap swivel. Uh, line, 50 pound again. Then you've got something, the purpose of this cork, demon dragon, bobber, balloon, whatever you put on it, is to float the bait up off the bottom. Plain and simple. That's what it does. You can add rattles to it. You can add spinner blades. You can come in here and write something on it. Sometimes that helps. Let's put some eyeballs on this one. Y'all want to see some eyeballs on it? We're going to call this one. Let's write something. Hmm? What do you think? I'm going to give it a name. There's an eyeball. There's an eyeball. Now it's got eyeballs. Let's see. You can see. They do get bit. Back of that one's been hit. It's been crushed. Let's give it a name. Let's see if this helps. There are some floats out there that have names on them. 
We'll call this one the Dieter Dragon. I like that. Dieter Dragon. A little rush to it. I'm gonna put it back out and see if it helps. I wish I could take credit for that, but that's a catfish Dave. Uh, again, that's that lose, it slings. That's in that deeper cut. So, that's a catfish Dave. I got that from him. Uh, got some eyeballs, got my name on it. Maybe it'll help. Let's hit the clicker. Bam! Where were we? Uh, I was going to tell y'all about something. I forgot what that smells like. I don't know. <laughs> one of my bangers that was another rag or something that was in the truck so how many today jeff only two so far you jumped uh you got me right here when i first anchored up so uh i do have the new rig wrap scale glenn i'll show it to you uh i'll just show you what i got which glenn sent me this from rig wrap i was like all right so I don't know if I, how, how I'll use it. I got to looking. Well, first, I'll show you why I use it. This is what my mess still looks like. I had inside my seat, and all this, come over, some of my rig wrap boxes and stuff. A bunch of crap that needs to be thrown away. I've eliminated half of it. Eliminated half of it. My problem was I had a lot of stuff in these little trays that everybody uses. The, uh, Plain old little tackled things. And I'm sure they're great for bass fishermen to put lures and stuff in. But my problem is I'll get something out. I'll put it on the seat, put it on the deck, and it gets knocked over. And then it dumps everything into the floor. So anyway, Glenn sent me this thing, this rig pack deal. And like everything the poor guy creates, I find some way to use it that does not fit into the way he designed it. So, God love Glenn. But it's got my stuff in it, broken up into all these little, if you got snaps, you put all these into an open tray and you dump them out, well, you've got a hundred of those things strewn across the floor. Same thing with the swivels, the hooks, if they're in those open trays. If this falls, I've got a few containers of stuff. Hey, there's my missing camera battery. <laughs> I was wondering where that was at. Uh, I've got my missing container of crap, uh, or my, well, sorry, let me get back on point here. I've got a few containers that fall. So what I did was, what's this in here? That needs to go in the trash, that back there. Um, I took some of these big containers of his, I put like some sinkers in here. These are the uh, pencil weights, by the way, from Dale's Homemade Tackle that uh, I'm trying out and I like them. Uh, they're good for drifting or you can anchor up with them. These are two ounces. I think they actually weigh a little more than two. I think you're getting a lot of bang for your buck with those. Got some homemade slinky weights, but I got those in there in the little compartments. I know this thing is designed to put a whole bunch of pre-tied rigs in, and I've got some pre-tied rigs in here, but I found this is the easiest way for me to do it. I've got hooks in here by size. Because what happens in those tackle trays is you put those in there, the tray falls over, they get all mixed up, and you got wrong size hooks in different places. So I kind of got them everything organized now. I can tell my different size hooks. Then over here, I've got in another one of the rig wrap little trays is some of my bobbers. And I've even got a place for my catfish sumo rattling line floats. Is that not pretty? It's a similar to a demon dragon, but it's not a demon dragon. It's a catfish sumo rattling line float. But yeah, that's kind of the way to do it. But anyway, back on point. Uh, and then I got room up here for my uh, leader material, some extra hooks. Oh, here's the cool thing. Rig wrap scissors. Get you one of these little doofloches here. Look here. You know how you can't find your scissors or your cutters? They're on a spring. Look at that. Now, if you have kids, you got to make them stop because they'll do what I'm doing and they'll fire this thing back and forth all day long so then it'll break and then it won't work and then you'll be mad and then they won't ever get to get fishing again but anyway back on point uh more line rattles sorry hooker's terminal tackle 
the line rattles. Jingle bells, jingle bells. I've got some inside. They come in different colors. Isn't that cool? Unless it's got those little line rattles. The whole reason we pulled this thing out was to talk about the scale. Uh, Rig Wrap's got this scale. I don't know if it's on the market yet. Maybe I'm not supposed to show this. I don't know, but I am. Uh, it's a lighter scale. It does it in pounds, kilograms, uh, ounces, and then some Chinese number, which I don't even know what that is. It's got a handle. Uh, and I'll tell you this, and it's got a hook. The, uh, the light's the biggest thing, and you can zero it if you're using a net or something, you can actually uh, zero it out. Um, this thing weighed uh, my fish that tied to personal best. It was 64 pounds in the net. I had it in that net right there. Used this scale to weigh it. Got it clear of the ground and it was 64 pounds. There's a rod getting ready to go off. Maybe a fish swimming off with it. Can't tell. Is it going? Or is the boat moving? Anyway, I can guarantee it's rated for, it says, where was the number? I seen a number on here somewhere on the pack. Anyway, 110 pounds. So I, I can, I guarantee you and can affirm this. It will weigh a uh, 100 or a uh, 64 pound weight. So that fish was in that net. So anyway, it's enough of that. I was hoping that fish would go off. Can't tell if he's on there or not. If he is, he's small. Let me put this back away. Yeah, that's that rig pack 60. If you see it online, I've got a video about it. The biggest thing is, it's got a place for your name tag right there. A little business card, like I said. And it happens to fit right there where three other of those dang boxes went. Not a fit in there. All right, so anyway. Glenn's getting me distracted and off in different directions on stuff. What's up, Catfish Weekly's in the house? Uh, that's Lyle. That's Lyle. The guy earlier was Doc. That's Lyle. So, Lyle, since you're in the chat, chime in with, are you doing live with Lyle today at 4 o'clock? Lyle does a little thing usually on Friday uh, to where he does live with Lyle. And uh, it's usually a shorter. Doc's back. Uh... So Lyle, let everybody know if you're doing live with Lyle today at four. Uh, he's part of the Catfish Weekly duo. And let us know who's on Catfish. Okay. So today at four o'clock here on YouTube, if you hadn't done so already, go subscribe to Catfish Weekly and you'll get to watch live with Lyle doing his thing. And uh, who's on the show Sunday, by the way, guys? Somebody chime in with that. I know Steve Douglas was on there last weekend. And I think y'all said who it was going to be, but I can't remember. The way the show works, folks, if there's anybody new out here who's not familiar with uh, Catfish Weekly, it's a live show, uh, and they have different guests, uh, different talk, different topics, uh, talk about different stuff, so they usually have some live guests on there. Uh, that was a train, sorry. Uh, it's a cool show. Uh, usually what happens is what's happening here on this live feed is everybody gets over in the side and goes to jacking their jaws over there and talking and all that kind of stuff, which is really cool because I don't see all the questions coming by, just like on the show. What's that noise? You're hearing a thump thump. It's dead quiet out here. Any of y'all that fish in a boat, you know how it is. I mean, it is slick as glass out here. And you know how it is when you hear a rod move or something, it vibrates the whole boat. That's what I was hearing. But anyway, uh, but yeah, it's really cool. We get over in the chat on the side and talk it up, talk about stuff. And a lot of times questions get answered over there on what's going on. So, yeah, good crew, good thing. What's the water temp? Trent, hey, Trent, what's up, buddy? Trent's the man from Mr. Pinky with the uh, Ancient Mariner Reel there. Uh, it's 51 here. Uh, the water temp pretty much in any of the clear water on the lakes around 51. Uh, the muddy part I found yesterday was around 44 degrees. I found some 44 degree water and I caught fish in it and I'll probably have that video out after New Year's. Um, fish will bite in that stuff. It's crazy. Uh, air temps, a little bit decent. It was in the 40s this morning. It's supposed to get up to 60. Uh, I did not dress extremely warm today, but if it actually gets into the 50s, it'll be nice. It's beautiful out here now. I mean, it's great fishing weather, uh, slick as glass. 
the downpour has not started yet. Uh, we had a little bit intermittent rain, and uh, so it's a uh, it's it's good fishing weather. Not the best catching weather. Only put two in the boat since I've been sitting here. We've been on what for an hour or so. I guess two fish an hour is probably a good catch rate this time of the year. Most of these little six hour trips, that's usually about how long I fish. I've been catching uh, uh, eight to 10, eight to 12 fish. So, uh, dude, Dustin's asking about the 61 pounder I caught. Yeah, I'm gonna have the video up. I'm probably gonna put it up, uh, I think maybe the Thursday after New Year's. Uh, I had some other stuff scheduled to go up, so. Uh, I'll probably put it up then. It's a uh, put together a decent little video on it. Uh, it will uh, it will it will answer a question. It, it will be a, a good topic, and it's about demon dragons. And uh, it, it 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 will it will be interesting to say the least. Uh, I'll tell you this: there were a lot of fish caught that day on demon dragons and one demon dragon in particular. Uh, I wanna say eight out of 10 fish were caught on this one demon dragon, no matter where I put it on the boat. And I call it demon dragon, it's my homemade version of it. It's a blank that I painted with green paint and some sparkles, and uh, but it worked. So anyway, you'll have to see the whole story. It'll be up, uh, I'm probably thinking Thursday I'll have it up. So. Uh, good fish, uh, very blessed to catch it. Uh, the, uh, this time of the year, these two weeks, part of it is I get to fish a lot because typically I'm not working much. The other part is I, uh, three, four years ago, I caught one all within a couple of days of that same date, uh, about a mile away, uh, that was 60 pounds. Uh, my personal best that tied that one, 61 was down on Monticello, New Year's Day. That's been... I don't know, eight years ago or so. So it's a good time of the year, like I've said, to catch good fish on our reservoirs. And I'm sure it's the same for most of you guys in other parts of the country. Before the waters get really, really cold and we're still in those 50, that seemed like that mid 50 temp is like ideal. Lower 50s is okay. Once it drops into the 40s, it can get tougher. There's still bite, but it doesn't seem like the bite is as widespread and as big. So, uh, but it's a great time to be out fishing. Uh, and especially if we get a warm snap that comes through, it, it 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 really helps. It really will pull all those fish up shallow. I just wish our lakes would stabilize a little bit. Everything I'm doing right now is anchoring uh, with the water moving constantly through here, uh, doing the drifting like you know we do it and dragging. It's uh, a little bit of a pain uh, to drift and get the boat slow enough. Uh, so. All of my stuff has been anchoring, so it'll be nice when things calm down a little bit because we've got current from one end to the other. What typically happens on our reservoirs is we'll, these upper reaches, you know, when they're really ripping water, you'll get some good current. Single anchor kind of current. Uh, but, you know, right now it's even the middle of the lake, it's stroking. They've got it coming in on one end and going out the other. So uh, it's, it's, it's really stroking through here, so fish no fish see if there's any questions in here y'all talking about bobbers or something i done lost you so i done lost that uh it's the cool thing about these uh live feeds and the chats on the side and everything is a lot of good information gets swapped around and bounced around in these things and uh it's uh i feel for like lyle and them when they're trying to keep up with everything going on in the chat and the feed. It's almost like you need a separate screen to keep up with what's going on in the feed. If anybody came in late, I'll give you an update real quick. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm Dieter. Welcome. Uh, fishing for catfish on Lake Wiley, North Carolina, South Carolina line. I'm actually in North Carolina right now. I'm anchored up. Water's around 51, clear where I'm at. Uh, used to be muddy about a week ago. Well, about three days ago it was muddy. And uh, just trying to see what's in here in this upper part of the lake right now. I've kind of gotten out away from the channel into the mouth of a creek just a little bit, just out of uh, view of uh, all the current and stuff. So that's kind of the setup. And uh, trying to get back in there. Hey, Ray Roseberry, welcome to the show, man. Uh, says you're a new viewer, glad you stopped by, glad you found it. Did YouTube suggest it to you? Is that how you found it? I'm always curious how people find the actual live feeds. Uh, 
because there's not, when I do them, um, I know when Lyle and them do them on Catfish Weekly, they're able to put in a little more metadata than you can out here. I'm doing these for my phone, so it's, uh, it's can't really put in too much, uh, too much information to get it to show up. But I know YouTube suggests, oh, we're getting a bite, we're getting a bite, we're getting a bite. There's that boat movement. Hang on. It's boat movement. Sorry, I may be getting a bite here. If any of y'all fish from a boat, you'll know that no matter how good you get your boat anchored up, you'll get a little bit of y'all that'll go on. And if you get a little bit of wind, a little bit of change in the current, even just shifting around standing different in the boat, it'll turn a different way. And sometimes, depending on how solid your sinkers are dug down, when that boat moves, that rod will want to go. You can just see it go or you see your line move, so that's what I've seen. Uh, what was that? Have you seen the amphibious something on the lake? I don't know what the other part, I can't see the other part of what that was. The amphibious something. Very cool. There, I don't know what that was. Oh, Matt got a notification. Okay, good. Am I coming to Winter Blues? No, I will not be at Winter Blues. Uh, hang on a second. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to check this real quick. I'll get back to that Winter Blues question. No, I've got some stuff work-wise that will probably, uh, it's going to it's gonna tie me up right up to Friday, so there's no way to get out there. It would be cool to go to some of those. I'm not big into the turn, uh, much fish in the tournament, as it would be cool to see everybody and hang out. Uh, but I'll just have to, uh, I'll have to share my love at the Catfish Conference. So that's what I'll be holding on to. Uh, only two months away. Browser asking, what are you fishing with today? I've got... Everything I've got out right now is gizzard shad. Uh, uh, I've got some white perch back there, and I've also got a crappie back there that I may cut up here. And uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, the shad somebody gave me yesterday. Uh, a big shout out to Matthew Anthony for giving me some bait as I was coming off the water. Very much a thank you. I always appreciate bait. The fish people are going to throw it away. Saved me some trouble from throwing an ad. So, I got that, and... Like I said, I had some crappie and some uh, white perch in there too. So, uh, so yeah, it's a uh, good bait. I mean, perch or shad, you're gonna catch them on either one out here fishing, so it works. So I might ask if I'm gonna be at the Catfish Conference on Friday. I just saw that fly by. Yeah, I will be up there Friday. I think, when do I come in? I think I come in Friday. I gotta check and see. Friday, I know, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. I think so, I think that's right. So I know, uh, I'm going to be out of town working up until Wednesday, Thursday, something like that. And there's something on the bubble there. So, yeah, I'll be out there. Uh, Saturday will be the biggest day. Probably be hanging out uh, around the catfish booth a bunch. Uh, catfish with a K, catfish clothing. Um, I'm going to try to set up a little area there. Uh, there's a video project that I'm working on. And I'm going to try to snag some people for a couple of minutes to get a couple of interviews if I can. Uh, and pull them over there and... Uh, get a few things and just try to gather some video too for next year and some other little video uh, thingies I'm working on so uh, if you see me there come up and say hey uh, it's uh, always amazing just how many people uh, you get to meet there that you a lot of times only get to see here on Facebook or on YouTube so uh, it's pretty cool pretty cool it'll be a good gathering it's in Louisville uh, any of y'all that don't know, it's the, what, 22nd through the 24th, I believe. Um, it's that weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, I think it's part of the day on Friday, all day Saturday, and then until 2 or 3-ish on uh, Sunday. The cool thing about Sunday is, is that, um, you know, sometimes uh, trade shows and stuff like that is people leave on Sunday or they're not there on Sunday. So... Uh, Steve said part of the contract this year is you have to stay until the end on Sunday. So uh, if you're trying to come on Sunday, 
everybody will be there. None of the vendors will be leaving. Now, they may be sold out, uh, but they will be there with an empty booth, uh, if nothing else. Uh, that is a reason to get there early. Uh, there is a lot of stuff gets sold. The vendors have gotten better and better about knowing how much stuff to bring. They've been doing it long enough now. Uh, I think the first year they were totally shocked. And so, well, from what Steve said, the first year there really weren't that many people selling stuff. It was more hanging out, talking, that kind of stuff. Second year, third year, and it got bigger. But now people kind of know what to expect. So if there's something special you want, I would be there either Friday or first thing early Saturday morning. So uh, it's a uh, it's, it's, it's a great thing for the people in the catfish industry that sell everything from, you know, sinkers to boats. Uh, there'll be somebody there that sells something and uh, one of those products. And it, it's, it's a great place to lay hands on stuff. I always say that fishing rods probably the best thing. Uh, the selection of rods is tremendous and you can actually touch them, feel them, hold them. And uh, you don't have to pay shipping to get them back. That's the uh, really nice thing about it. So, uh, And yes, Lyle, I will be coming by the Catfish Weekly booth and uh, sitting down, uh, taking over to show while you go to the bathroom or whatever. And uh, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll, it'll be cool. I look forward to seeing you guys. It was a great time last year. Uh, I actually ran out in the middle of one of the live things I was doing with Luke and I felt bad about it, but I seen somebody that I had talked to online a bunch and uh, I actually ran out in the middle of a live feed. I don't do good on live stuff where I'm not in a boat and I'm held hostage. So you'll have to chain me down to the uh, chair this year so I don't get up and run off and what I'm trying to care. But Luke did a great job. Luke's great and he carried the show. So we're in good shape. Any of y'all that tuned in late, uh, you missed two fish. Had one that was 10 pounds and the other was what, 16? Something like that. Only two on the uh, Dieter Melhorn fish clicker. And uh, we're looking for a sponsor for the fish clicker, by the way. Uh, for uh, uh, $10,000 a year, your logo can be right on there. Uh, it can't be no bigger than a quarter, though. So that's what it's going for. $10,000 a year, and we'll put uh, your name right there the size of a quarter. So I think it's a good deal. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But might be a little cheap. We're open to negotiation, though. So we'll see how it goes. Let's see who else jumped in here on the feed. Uh, over your right shoulder line, drop back, right shoulder. That would be that's my right. I just wonder if it's reversed in what you're seeing. Yeah, that one's still hung. That one's back and forth. I just want to hear the zzz, 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 or that '61 when I caught it. The rod went over, and it was a classic blue bite. It was like. Zzz, and it was just steady. It was there was no. Zzz, it was just. Zzz, I'm like that's a good fish. Uh, didn't realize it was that big, but that's uh, that's what I want. I just want one of those good blue, folded over and go. So you're turning the bait clicker. So loose line will circle hook. So you turn on the bait clicker. So loose line. Brendan's asking about circle hooks. Not sure if I totally understood that in clickers. Uh, I do not run a clickers. I don't know. Let me clarify this. I do not run clickers. Uh, and I don't have my real, I do not have my real in free spool with the clicker on. Uh, reason being uh, a, two things. Make sure I word this correctly. Uh, sometimes I say stuff wrong uh, and it confuses people. Circle hooks by design uh, need resistance to set the hook first and foremost. So allowing a fish to swim off with the line with no resistance won't allow a circle hook to set. The other important point is, is the way catfish consume food and bait, uh, whatever they're eating. Uh, fish are basically two ways. They're either biters, chewers, or they're inhalers and the catfish is an inhaler. So all things being equal, if a catfish is big enough, he will pretty much, depending on the size of the bait, just inhale it. Comes up to it, womb, sucks in water, everything. It brings it in his mouth, it closes his mouth. Now, depending on the size of the bait, it may not make it all the way in. If it's a small fish, it may be hanging halfway out, can't get it all the way into his mouth. 
but generally speaking, their next reaction is to leave with it. And that's just a competitive thing because you know how it is sometimes when a fish strikes, it, I don't know if it's an electrical impulse, fish sense the movement, what it is, but a lot of times you'll have another rod go off. And that's just a competition for food thing. So what happens is they, you know, hit it, boom, swim off, and that's when the circle hook pulls back to the outside corner of the mouth, ideally, or depending on which way the line's going out and catches the outside of the mouth, and that's what causes the hook set. So, long explanation to a question of, no, I don't run clickers. The only time I would run clickers is if I was out here fishing late, late at night and I was about to go to sleep, I might turn the clickers on <laughs> just as a wake-up alarm. But I don't run them. They don't. You don't need them with circle hooks. I know people like them. Uh, uh, I, I know people like hearing them. I know it's exciting. I do it when I shark fish. I turn my clickers on all the time. Now, I will, but that's a little different in that uh, shark fishing, sharks are chewers and biters, and they will bite something, swim off with part of it, bite it again, bite it again. So I run clickers and keep everything in free spool shark fishing. Uh, but that's a different animal in that th their bite. So, uh, okay, it's a different, different approach to it. So hopefully that answered your question. It's a good question, though. Uh, I know people like it. Uh, I know people like setting the hook. You know, uh, I was, uh, you know, I know people like jerking the rod. I know they like watching bass fish and rearing back on. If you do, use use J-hooks. I mean, you can do that. Uh, it's just for me, like right now, if I was using J-hooks, I could, you know, maybe, if I get a bite now, a fish takes off with it, it's about 95% that it's, it's going to get hooked. It's going to hook up. Uh, hook rates are phenomenal with circle hooks. Uh, uh, the other thing is conservation-minded. Uh, it's better for the fish. It's a lot less likely to gut hook, throat hook, deep hook a fish. Uh, it can still happen. Uh, there, it, it can still happen, but it's a lot less likely. For me personally, I would rather I would rather hook one, lose one, than to gut hook, deep hook a big fish and kill it just to catch it. And that's just me. I, it it it. I've caught, en I've caught enough fish and I know I'll catch them again that I'm not willing to kill a fish to, you know, just to make sure I hook into everyone. So that's just me. That's the way I do it. Uh, everybody's at a different place in where they are fishing. And for me, circle hooks, it's, it's a lot more relaxing. Like I said, I can put my back to them and they'll load the rod up and I've got them. So uh, that's just, you know, some people like to sit there on ready the whole time and that's not me again nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that fish how you want to uh fish legal uh but you know for me it's not it's i, I don't i like i like this to be fun I, i'm bad enough with my obsession in other places just as far as you know sitting at home figuring out what the weather is is water moving is water not moving you know I, I'm I'm obsessed by it enough when I'm not on the dang boat. So when I'm on the boat, uh, it's actually a, it's actually nice to sit back and just let the fish bite or not bite. So uh, distinguish the appearance of a channel versus blue. Very very simple and to the point. The anal fin that is the fin that is on the bottom of the fish. The big long fin near its near its butt. That's why it's called anal fin. Uh, even though I think it's called a vent on a fish, not a butt. But the outside edge is flat. If you look at the outer edge of that fin, it is flat. A channel, you look at the outside, a channel cat's going to be rounded. It may be hard to see, but when you pull it out straight, it's rounded on a channel cat. Blue is flat. It'll come to the end of it and it'll round up where it goes back to meet the body. But the outer edge of it is, uh, is, is, sorry, I'm adjusting my, here that is the definitive way to do it uh the quick easy down and dirty you can count the rays that's a pain in the butt uh you can't go by the coloration on the fish because mature channel casts will look like a blue uh, especially during the small uh, especially during the spawn 
uh, I'm a sure channel cat will look like a blue as far as, far as coloration uh, when they start getting jacked up for the spawning. Uh, spots, eh, bigger channel cats lose their spots, so you can't really go by spots. So, uh, yeah, I'm adjusting my bra a lot. I got my uh, bibs on here and falling off. But yeah, that is the simple, easiest way. Uh, obviously, sometimes the coloration gets really, really well defined on them, and yeah, you can look at a blue and they've got that real gray looking color. But when you get into those big channel cats, it gets tough. Small channel cats, you know, it's, you know, most of them have got spots. Uh, you know, there's little subtle differences in head shape and all that kind of stuff, but the, the easiest, quickest way is that anal fin. If somebody holds one up in a picture and you can see that anal fin exposed to where you can see it full length, not folded over, you can tell in a second which kind of fish it is. So that's the quickest and the easiest thing. Hopefully that helps you. You can count the rays, what I can look it up. I always get the numbers wrong. I think channel cats are less than 24 and blues are more, but that's just a pain in the butt. If you're to that point where you're counting the fins, you can just stretch it out and look at it. So, bam, hope that helps. And Catfish Weekly says I'm 100% correct. So once they say that, it can't be argued or discussed. You can't, you can't go into discussion mode at all. It's over with once Catfish Weekly says I'm right. I'll be right forever. So, over, done, kaput, whammy. What's up, Dale? Dale, are you out fishing? Dale Sturgis, who is in the uh, feed here, is another fisherman in one of them really nice boats, one of them boats you really hate. Yeah. I just, every time I just see him, I just, mmm. You know what that is? That's Haterade. Mmm. Tastes good. Him, Steve Douglas, fish on the rod that's hung. Oh, we got two of them going. The one that's hung has a fish on it. It's around something. That one went too. I think it's into that. I think there's a tree out there. This is gonna be a mess. Oh, I hate Steve Douglas, and I hate uh, uh, Dale because he's got a nice boat. And uh, who else? Zach Taylor's got a nice boat. Don't like him. Jeff Manning. Don't like him. All these people boats. Hater egg. All right. Something hit that. I don't know if it pulled it out of its mouth. Let me check. So it's around a stump or a limb or something. or something out there It's around. What I'm doing is I just put it in a free spool. This is where I'll put a clicker on. Knock it in a free spool. Hopefully, it'll go that way and pull it off of the uh, whatever it's in. We'll see. This other rod was moving, though. Which tells me it may be laid across the same limb or whatever that is back there. Yeah, there's a limb ledge something that both of those are in. I think it's a limb because both of them move when we should. So what do you do? Good point here. I've got it in free spool and the clicker's on. Hopefully, if there's a fish hook, it'll swim off. So if I was tournament fishing, I'd pull all the anchors, reel everything up, and go back there and try to get over it and try to free it and pull it up and see what it is. So uh, I'm not tournament fishing, it's raining, and I really don't care that much, so I'm going to give it a minute to get free. Uh, yeah, there's something right off that area. I didn't see it on sonar coming in, but it may be off to the side. There's a limb or something out there that's hanging something up. So, Lyle's boat rides some ice. Let's see. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, no, no. My, yeah, my Carolina Skiff's a good boat. Uh, I ain't gonna knock it. I, uh, it's a trade-off on boats, and I know that. I, I like those big, deep V metal boats. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the John boats. I like high sides on the boat. Uh, that's uh, a, a safety thing more than anything. Uh, I think it's easier to operate and do a lot of stuff with higher sides on the boats. So I like those, uh, 
I just like those boats better. I like the DB because you can plow through some rough water. Trade off, the draft on them is probably a lot more than it is in this boat. You know, I'm, I was looking at 0.8 on my sonar yesterday. Uh, I probably would have grounded that boat uh, if I was in that stuff. So, you know, that's a, that's a trade off. There is no, I don't think there is a uh, perfect boat. But uh, some of it has to do with where you're fishing, how you're fishing, all that kind of stuff. So, and budget. So, it's what it is. Lines, I love lines. The pretty boats. So, so yeah. Uh, it is what it is. Rain's here, folks. Oh, you can't see nothing now. Ceiling is dropping. Those towers up there are. Uh, ceiling is dropping. What are y'all talking about? Seventy-three thousand dollars. What the heck? Are we talking about boats here? I cannot, in my right mind, justify paying seventy-three thousand dollars for a boat that does not run into the ocean out of sight of land. I can't justify it. There is no freshwater boat, in my mind, worth that kind of money. Why is it, y'all? Crazy. Y'all crazy for spending that kind of money. If I spend that much money, I better have twin engines and radar and an EPIRB so I can run out to 12 mile, 25 miles, somewhere off that. Hang on, let me flip my hatch closed up there. But hey, that's just me. That's just me. No, that's crazy. Seventy-three thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> Glenn from Mary Grant says you can run any boat offshore, and that is factually correct. You can. Any boat will run into the ocean. Uh, my boat will run twenty-five miles offshore. Now, will I make it back if the wind shift and there's five to six footers? Eh, maybe not, but it will make it. It will go. So. But, uh, what a day, what a day. Well, I'm gonna get off here because I'm gonna pull these up. Probably gonna make a little move. This has been fun. It's been a good crowd. We're down to 85, had a hundred and some at some point. Uh, if you hadn't done so, please consider subscribing. Uh, try to do this a little more often uh, when I'm out fishing and try to do some on uh, Facebook Live too. So uh, does the rain, the Bimini top keep the rain off? Yeah, it's not raining on me right now. The uh, top's pretty dang good, so. Keeps me getting dry, so I'll sit out here and get it out. I'm not a big enclosure, enclosure person. Uh, they're nice, but uh, I like my Bimini. Uh, somebody said, am I going live again today? I don't know. If I get into a place where there's a really, really good consistent bite, I may do it. So, But, uh, you know, make sure you're subscribed and your notifications are on, which means you hit that little bell. That way uh, you'll be notified when I do go live. So, anyway. Enjoyed it, guys. Uh, Four o'clock today, Catfish Weekly. Make sure you're tuned in. Uh, it will be uh, uh, live with Lyle on Friday. He's going to do his little thing. And then Sunday night, Catfish Weekly. They're shifting their night because of New Year's. So they'll be on at 8 o'clock Sunday. So uh, I'll be in the chat over on the side. And I will see Stephen at the conference. I will be at the conference in a couple months. And uh, keep a lookout for my new videos. Y'all take care.